What's up, Bertini fam? Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be going over how to do a performance or a high performance oil change. Just in general, I'm gonna go over the different kind of oils, the oils that I use on my vehicles, on my motorcycles, etc. the reason why I use those oils, what kind of weights I use, what kind I recommend, and the differences between them. Then I'm gonna actually do an oil change on my Mini Cooper, my high performance, Mini Cooper JCW. Um, so some of that is gonna be applicable um, to those of you guys who have clicked this video. Some of it isn't. Obviously, the oil change on my Mini Cooper itself is probably not gonna be applicable to everybody out there in the universe, but at least the concept of the oils that I use, why I pick them, et cetera, can be applicable to your high performance vehicles as well. And now if you have not yet joined the Bertini fam, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell. This so you can stay up to date on all the content that I put out every single week. And it's free to click that subscribe button. It costs you literally nothing but a half a second of your time, maybe not even that, to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. And the best part about clicking the subscribe button is it's free to do so. Now that all the formalities are out of the way, go ahead and roll the intro. All right, now first things first, let's go ahead and talk oils here. Now the oil that I'm gonna be doing in my Mini Cooper, now keep in mind, mine is a tuned and built Mini Cooper, and so I'm gonna be using different oil than what the factory recommends, and I'll explain what I mean by that here in a second. But um, first off, the oil that I always choose to go with, and if you've seen any of my videos for the past few years now, I always go with Amsoil, and there's a reason for that. Um, Amsoil, at least in my opinion, and from what I've seen in different tests, tests and from taking apart different motors this stuff leaves your motor on the inside like super squeak, squeaky clean like I mean it literally like legitimately looks brand new every single motor I've ever pulled apart from using or after using Amsoil especially or more specifically the sig the synthetic motor oil the uh, signature series blend always 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 it's like a clean motor it's like no sludge or anything on the inside, so highly recommend this stuff. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna be doing specific to my Mini Cooper, which I do recommend for those of you who all are interested in doing like a high performance oil change, is getting a high performance oil filter. And the reason is, is because um, this stuff is high capacity, and but when it says like high efficiency, I'll explain what that means here, um, basically it allows for better oil flow. So to some extent, less restriction, and it still catches a lot more particle. So highly, highly recommend going with a performance oil filter when doing your high performance oil changes. Now I'm sure as you notice here, um, my oil is 0W30. And there's a reason why I went with 0W30. Now I don't wanna blabber on about the differences between like all the weights that are out there um, in the world in terms of like what the different oil weights are. Um, but in a nutshell, and I don't wanna overcomplicate this for you, there's plenty of scientific videos out there on the web if you're interested in looking up any of those scientific videos on the different oil um, the different oil weights. But basically, what you need to look at is the zero is how well that oil is gonna perform um, at its minimum threshold number. So let's just say zero, I don't wanna say zero degrees because that's kind of false, but um, it's gonna operate effectively at that lower number. So typically what you wanna think about is let's say if your factory recommends for your specific vehicle that you use a 5W20, right? That is the recommended oil for your vehicle. You never typically want to go above that five number. So you don't typically wanna go from five to 10. So you wouldn't wanna go to, to uh, 10W20 as an example. That's what's typical. So if that is really you and your manufacturer says, well, you know, we recommend you put in a 5W20, if you wanted, and I would recommend, obviously if you live in like a colder climate, going down to like a zero W20, that just means that you'll be able to start your, or your engine will be a little bit better protected in a cold startup. So like zero W20 
20 as an example is gonna have better cold performance or cold startup performance than a 5W20 would. Now, before some of you folks out there are like, oh, you're oversimplifying it, there's so much more involved. Yes, there is a lot more involved, but the problem is, is people um, make this so, so, so complicated and it really isn't that complicated. I've built, I've had tons of different race motors. I've spoken with several different race teams, people who build, I mean, crap, I think uh, the last person I was speaking to at the track built like a 2,500 horsepower um, full-blown drag car and was saying, look, people overcomplicate this process, especially unless you're in those really high horsepower numbers. A lot of the times you should just stick to what your manufacturer says. Now, in my case scenario, my manufacturer says that I should be putting in 0W20. So why did I pick a 0W30? And why do some super, super high performance vehicles like V12s or like um, that are in like Ferraris or Lamborghinis or, um, or Bugatti, I don't know about the Bugatti, I think the Bugatti is a V6, V8, I don't even know. Ooh. Don't kill me for that one for all my uh, car enthusiast Bugatti folks um, for not knowing that. I know it's twin turbo, that much I know. Um, the Sharon is twin turbo. But getting back to what I was saying about the oils, why do cars like the Corvette C8 use a 0W40, I believe is the blend that's recommended for that, is because the top number is how well that oil is gonna perform in high heat or high performance conditions. So if you're tracking your vehicle, Obviously like a C8 Corvette is meant to be taken to a track. So it is a high performance motor. So the manufacturer recommends that you put in a zero W40. Once again, the 40 being that it's going to, going to operate really well at higher temperatures. That's typically what that 40 is going to mean. So in my case scenario, if my manufacturer has told me, which is many, um, AKA BMW has told me or told us who own this vehicle that you should put in 0W20. Why am I putting in 0W30? Well, I have a very, a highly modified Mini Cooper and a, uh, a highly modified setup. And so I'm going to be tracking my Mini Cooper. I do run my Mini Cooper pretty hard. And that is why I'm going with a 0W30 is so that it operates at a, or it's able to operate effectively at a higher temperature. So it's better for my turbo, it's better for my internals. Another thing that I wanna call out here is why synthetic? So synthetic is the only um, oil that I recommend. Now, when you see somebody say full synthetic versus like how this says, 100% synthetic motor oil. Essentially, these are the same exact things. Both are 100% um, or full synthetic. Both are the exact same thing. The only difference is, in my opinion, Amsoil is being honest about what it is. So in this case scenario, 100% synthetic motor oil, that is an accurate statement. Anytime somebody says full synthetic motor oil, that's kind of misleading because no oils, all oils have additives in them, or most of them do, um, especially these days in 2022, I think we're in, we're about to go into 2023. So saying full synthetic motor oil is kind of misleading. I prefer how Amsoil says it, which is 100% synthetic motor oil. And this statement, the 75% more wear protection, um, like I said, to me, this stuff is tested. Um, I highly recommend this. I do oil changes anywhere between 2,500 and 5,000 miles. Obviously I could do it myself. So it costs me nothing more than the oil itself and um, the filter and some of my time. But yeah, this is the stuff that I highly recommend just because once again, when you tear apart your motor um, and you see how clean it is and how it's, uh, how it looks, Amsoil is like the clear winner for me. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying about synthetic, always look for 100% synthetic motor oil or the one that says full synthetic motor oil. That is recommended. I'd recommend that in anybody's car and all new vehicles. Obviously, they're probably all gonna recommend that, um, but highly recommend you going with the um, Amsoil one. This is the only one I use. If you look at all of my stuff, this is my recommended oil. By the way, shout out to Yeti for making these great great uh what is this called tumblers oh one more thing to call out with the oils um before i jump into actually doing the oil change um is that you can always be safe going or for the most part you're always safe going up a number um or in this case on this side going down a number so this number you can always you could pretty much always be safe going up so going let's say from 30 to 40 or from 20 to 30, that's safe. It's never safe though, if it says 40 to go down to 30. That is like 99.9999% of the time. 
it's not safe to do that. And then same thing on this side, on the Zero W, um, in this case, Zero W on the left-hand side, um, it's always safe. Let's say it's at five W's recommended. It's always safe to go down to uh, a number before it. So if you're at five W going to Zero W, or if it was at 10 W going down to five W, it's always safe to do that 999 or 99.9999% of the time. With that being said, obviously, like I said, this is meant to dumb it down for a lot of folks out there. I know there's tons of sci more scientific videos out there that explain it super granularly and like get really into detail on the numbers. That's not the point of this video. I do need to jump in and get the oil on this Mini Cooper um, change. This is actually my first oil change since owning the Mini Cooper. I've actually only had, it's crazy how many mods I've already done to this thing. It's typical with all of my builds if you've been following me for any amount of time. Um, but I've only put on, I think about like 600 miles on this thing since I've gotten it. One thing that I will say, and this is really important when buying used vehicles, a lot of people think, and that it's mainly because the dealers say that they do like all of this servicing to the vehicle before they give it back to you and they check everything and they make sure that all the fluids and everything is good. A lot of the time they don't. And I'm not trying to, trying to take shots at dealers right now, but the truth is, is a lot of the time they don't do these oil changes before they sell them to you. They don't, they like literally check the fluids to make sure everything is working and running right. Um, but let's say that vehicle had an oil change at 7,000 miles or whatever, and that, that's when it was traded in. They're not then going to do an oil change on them. And I know a lot of dealers say that they do that. But like in my case scenario, this Mini Cooper, there is no way based on how black this oil is that the 500 miles or 600 miles that I've put on this vehicle since owning it has made the oil this black in this Mini Cooper and this gummy. But I'm going to, like I said, we're going to dump the oil on this, get this oil changed out, put this new AMS oil in. And from here on forward, it is only going to be AMS oil that goes in this Mini Cooper. So if I ever do decide to sell it, or obviously if I keep it in my collection of things, um, it's going to be a solid, super clean, nice, crisp motor. With that out the way, let's go ahead and jump into this oil change. For those of you who don't care about watching me do an oil change in a Mini Cooper, go ahead. You can exit out of this video. That's fine. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you found this video useful or comment down below, hate on me or comment down below and love on me, whichever one you prefer to do. With that out the way, let's go ahead, change some oil. All right, and now using a 17 millimeter socket, go ahead and just back out this bolt. Make sure, by the way, on the Mini Cooper F56, there's a washer here. Make sure that that comes out with this bolt um, because we're gonna need to replace it with a new crush washer. Now, something I recommend doing as well, since my vehicle right now is up on a jack stand and a jack, I would recommend lowering the vehicle a little bit more just so we get as much of that oil out as possible because right now, obviously, the vehicle is at a tilt. And because it's at a tilt, some of the, some of the oil is still gonna be you know, sitting down here at the bottom. So um, I'm just gonna lower it slightly. And then of course, I'll put it back on the jack stand after, after I'm done uh, draining out all the oil. And for those of you who are doing this oil change, make sure this is the washer that I was talking about that you wanna make sure is removed before installing back the bolt or the drain bolt. Now, before we install this plug back in, I wanna go ahead and remove the old filter. This way we can get this installed. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Now for this portion, you are going to need a T55 which is this bad boy right here. looks something like this. Um, or not something like this, this is what it looks like. <laughs> I'm like, it looks something like this and looks exactly like this. Um, actually, this is a safety one. We don't need this one. Um, this is the one we could use. Um, but yeah, it's a T55. So right there, T55, 55. All right, now the oil filter is right over here. Let me go ahead and move this out the way so I can show you real quick where it's at. The oil filter, let's get it in the camera. Let me move this in here um, and let's see, let's adjust the light a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to use my orange glove to show you, but this is right where it's at. 
So the first thing we need to do is use the T55 to unscrew this middle portion. So the T55 goes right here in the center. And then that'll allow us to drain out all the oil. Thank you to German Engineering for that because for those of you who have ever done an oil change removing the oil filter, um, typically you have to like put a hole in it, let it drain out first um, so that it like flows out whatever remaining oil is in there and then you'd pull it off. So this is super convenient. Thank you to German Engineering for this. So let's go ahead and get this one out. And to remove the oil filter, you'll need a 32 millimeter um, socket. So something like this, I've used an extension to an adapter back to my 3.8. All right, now like with everything on my channel, I don't like to put anything, like install back anything that is like dirty and messy. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just uh, shoot this with some degreaser here, um, get it nice and cleaned up um, before installing the new filter in. I'll get it cleaned up really good and then blow it out with an air compressor and then replace the O-ring on this thing and We'll be good to install the new uh, k and Performance oil filter. And uh, look how nasty this thing is. This thing is freaking gross. There's no way that dealership did an oil change on this thing before selling me that vehicle. It's crazy. Like I have legitimately, I mean, I could show you on the odometer. I've legitimately haven't put more than four, not, not like, sorry, like five or 600 miles on it. I think that's what the, the last trip read um, for the oil to look this freaking disgusting, so. And then put the T55 back in here and this gets tightened down to seven Newton meters. So not very tight at all. Then now the new filter. All right, so we've run into a little issue here. Um, there's a reason why I have a factory OE filter here right now. So the issue is this, the KNN filter, if you notice over here, there's no indent on this part, which does make sense because the cap that it comes with, it doesn't need to go all the way into where it goes into. The problem is, is this piece does not properly thread into this piece, which this piece we obviously need. The factory one, on the other hand, has this longer portion, which is makes perfect sense because it goes into that dip. So the difference between the KN and this one is obviously you see the dip there, no dip, right? And so unfortunately we will not be able to install this KNN. So the HP, for those of you in the mini world who have been wondering, will this HP 7039 fit the Mini Cooper um, F56? It doesn't, at least in my model, I have the two liter um, 2020 JCW model. Um, it does not in my, in, in my specific Mini Cooper. Although what I've read is that the one that is the PS7039 um, will fit supposedly, according to Canon, they're the exact same thing, but it's up to you if you wanna try it and see um, if you get the PS version, if it'll actually work. In this case scenario, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the factory OE one and we'll be good to go. Before I forget, just in case you all have never ever installed an O-ring on anything before, make sure to put a little bit of oil on this o-ring the way that o-rings are designed uh to work and seal properly is with a bit of oil so i see people install the o-rings and they're really dry that is not going to get a proper seal that's not how o-rings are designed from anybody and this goes with any o-ring that you put on anything anywhere unless it's designated you and said do not oil this o-ring always put a little bit of oil on the o-ring So we're gonna to torque this down, as you can see here, it is 25 and then five Newton meters. So what I'll do is I'll tighten it down to 25 Newton meters first, and then I'll add another five to get it to 30 Newton meters. Um, and that'll be our uh, setting to tighten this thing down. Don't forget, it's a 32 millimeter over here. By the way, that is 22 foot pounds for those of you who are uh, not using Newton meters. All right, and now to do the oil drain plug now with the new washer on there, let's go ahead and tighten this down to 18 foot pounds.
Now that we've taken much longer than expected to do this oil change, mainly because of uh, filming purposes, let's go ahead and get this new oil into the Mini. All right, now given that I have the 2.0 liter model, and this is a B48 um, engine, so essentially it's just a BMW engine, uh, it requires 5.5 liters. If you have the smaller engine, that is gonna be 4.5 liters that's required. So we'll go ahead and put it up to 5.5, and then we'll run through the sequencing of checking the oil and resetting our factory settings, like redoing, resetting our, our oil setting for maintenance. All right, and now we need to go to the oil right here, hold it down. All right, reset successful, and that is it. Now let's just go ahead and start her up and see what she sounds like. Now I'm gonna continue to leave my Mini Cooper on here for a little bit, probably for about 10 minutes or so. Um, then I'm gonna take it around for a ride. I've already went into the system settings um, within the Mini Cooper just to make sure that it's registering as the oil is all okay. Remember, these Mini Coopers do not have dipsticks and so you need to do it all electronically. That's, I believe that's a lot of BMWs, especially, especially the newer ones or even like um, the new Toyota Supra it's all pretty common um, with those. And so um, I'm gonna let this run for a little bit here. With that being said, don't forget, if you're interested in purchasing anything that I used in today's video, I'll include links in the description box below as well as part numbers. If you're interested in picking up any of these parts or doing an oil change in your Mini Cooper um, or whatever vehicle that you have, don't forget you can save money if you use code Bertini. I'll put links, um, or uh, not links, but I'll put what my code is in the description box below for all these different websites. It's typically always going to be um, Bertini or Bertini 10 or uh, something along those lines, but go ahead and check in the description box below. That's where you can find out what my codes are and you could save yourself some money. With that being said, that's all I have for today's video. Make sure you're putting out good energy into the world and you're paying it forward. I'll check you all out later. Bye now.